Well, joining me now on the London Theatre Review are Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss, creators of Six and more recently, Why Am I So Single? Uh, Toby, Lucy, welcome. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Oh, nice to have you. Nice to have you. How are you both doing? And uh, how, well, the show's been running now for quite a for quite a bit of time. How's it How's it going? How's the feeling about it? Yeah. Oh, it's super fun. Yeah. I mean, it's just you know, it's just wild to have something you've worked on for so many years just be there in front of you and just like the cast are just sublime mm-hmm. and yeah it's just awesome to have audiences loving it yeah um we should for those who haven't seen it we should unpack what the uh show is about really it couldn't be more different to six toby you mm-hmm. tell us in an outline what, what what should people expect from why am i so single um so it's basically about these two best friends sitting on a sofa in one of their flats over an evening and they basically decide after one comes from a particularly bad day, let's figure out why we're so single once and for all tonight. Um, and <laughs> hilarity ensues. Um, and meanwhile, they're also meant to be writing um, a musical that they've been putting off writing because they can't think of anything to write about because all they really want to talk about is their tragic little dating lives. How much of it is autobiographical, not just about your dreadful love lives, but about <laughs> the challenge of writing a follow-up to Six? Lucy? Um... <laughs> I was going to do a bit, but I'll just be honest. <laughs> oh, <God laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it is pretty autobiographical in lots of ways. But then also, you know, as with anything like this, uh, it sort of also draws on lots of our friends' experiences. And also, actually, there's sort of these two main characters that I think sort of vaguely resemble us. But actually, they both characters have quite a lot of both of us um, in them. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of a fun little. Uh, treat for us to sort of know which things are real and which things are completely fabric- fabricated and which things little easter eggs for yourselves yeah there, um, it? but yeah. no one else will ever know right yeah. Yeah. well unless you write a sort of you know, making of yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. The end yeah. of it. Yeah. a hefty tome yeah <laughs> <laughs> how much did you how much pressure did you feel uh, to come up with you know a follow up to six what was that like after you know what, what was what were the pressures on you or that you put on yourselves for that it was kind of it was actually kind of wild looking back like <laughs> like how quickly it came about like because you know we like wrote six in 2017 went to the Edinburgh Fringe and then you know it did these like London showcase performances at the end of 2017 early 2018 and like even at those people coming up to us being like wow like this is so great it it's already doing performance in London so what's next yes <laughs> and we were like we just did this <laughs> come on give me a break and then yeah. that question then kind of and then I think like because because then of like we wrote six with it ha- with like no intention of it having a life after the original Adam Fringe run, run. Surprised it even made it there to be honest. Like then when everything so ridiculous was happening in twenty eighteen of it like you know going to the, like on this tour and going to the West End and then it being announced like it was going to America and all these things. I think we're, we're it felt a bit like oh gosh wow like it's 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 become this like big huge thing so i guess now we're musical theatre writers and we should probably you know write another big huge musical because yeah. that's become this big huge thing and i think I, that was then like, i guess like a pressure that like, we kind of like put on ourselves of being like oh well because now six you know you know it's meant to be a bit of a joke is now that's like big big thing i guess like if we're going to do something else it's got to also be this, like a big huge important thing yes. and i think when we tried to do that is when we realized Oh, that's not why we wrote sex. We wrote it because we thought it was stupid and right. fun, and then so and it made us laugh. And yeah. it made us yes. laugh, and so let's like let's do that let's, again. Let's do something that's like stupid and fun and makes us laugh. And at what stage did you decide to to turn the the sort of camera in on yourselves, as it were? I think it was we actually went to this writing retreat in early 2019, and we went kind of being like, okay, we've got to write a big important musical about whatever theme, and then when we were there we were like that's when we had the kind of moment of being like actually it just feels absurd like, the absurdity of trying to like follow something up that you never really intended kind of then led us to be like okay well why don't we literally go in the opposite direction and go completely like to the smallest le- quote unquote least important story we can think of which mm. is like you know two people like us sat on the sofa moaning you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> going on hinge and stuff and, yes. yeah. and, and I think that kind of that tension is also like what it's kind of like what like the central tension of why am I so single is because it's a show that kind of like is interested in like exploring the question of like what's a big important story what warrants like stage time what war- like what do we view as like important and like central main narratives is it like 
heteronormative models of romance and there's like heroic journeys um and like why why is it that these characters feel like you know like people that feel like their romantic arcs don't match up to what they've been told is important feel right. like that they're not as much and, and so yeah yes I see. I love the fact that you end the second act on a bee being trapped in the room. That was one of my favourite moments in theatre of this year so far. I can confirm that is based on a true story. Okay. Is, <laughs> it's all coming out now, though, isn't it? Yeah. You went away to write. Actually, it's not. It was a hornet. It was a hornet. Sorry. Blimey. God. Yeah. Scratch that. Cut. Yes, we, we, um, we had made a really big imaginative leap to turn a hornet into a bee. And that was hard. That was pretty that wild. Was, yeah, yeah, because like because we knew from our experience how much scarier it was. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. given the kind of lethal nature. So it's entirely different. Hornet, 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 hornet doesn't work so well with the title, or you musically does it. Yeah, as not as many rhymes. Musical minor. puns. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, what I mean? hornet minor. Hornet, not really. Not really. Doesn't really work. But yeah. that was that was a, that was a journey to get to that this, place. This may be a daft question, but I wonder how much sort of COVID played into uh, the fact that you ended up writing a, a, a musical about basically two people sitting on a sofa. Was well, that part I, of it? I mean, because you'd had you'd had six cancelled in New York because of COVID, hadn't you? Yeah. Or delayed. Mm-hmm. I actually this weirdly the whole idea was um, in twenty nineteen happened in twenty nineteen. So right. um, actually, then when COVID sort of hit, and then we actually had for the first time in years time to spend significant mm. periods of time writing so in 2019 we spent probably about two weeks in total maybe three the like yeah. working on new stuff because we had so much stuff to do with six but yeah. you know the first time we were gifted the opportunity of some time to write we were like i don't know if this will this show will work anymore or be relevant mm. anymore because you know it's like about dating and going out and who knows what the world's gonna like who knows what theater's gonna look like so we actually found like sort of even though it now looks like being like oh great writing about people on the sofa that this is sort of exactly what we should have been doing during COVID. Mm. It actually sort of almost felt like we were like, well, we can't. We, yeah, we thought it would maybe mean that it would never happen. Yeah. I, me- I remember when we were in that first big lockdown, we like discussed and we writing it. I remember feeling like I can't because mm. because like the show. It's a, it, it's a, it's a, it may be interesting, but because like when we first came up with it, it was it did feel a lot more like it was going to be this like autobiographical piece, and it was like mm. the characters were a lot more like we were then, and then I think with the space and, and with like the kind of like forced introspection that like you know the pandemic had for like lots of people of like yeah. having so much time to sit and reflect and like learn about yourselves because of this like ridiculous mm. situation we're all in I think that then like led us when we came back to the project to feel like oh we're now like writing about these like people from the past who like aren't who we are now oh, and that allowed us to like, kind of like fictionalize it more and so then like as we then we can be we came back to it it was like way more like a work of fiction right inspired by people who we were which honestly thank goodness can you imagine if, <laughs> if, we'd, if we'd done it in 2019 and I was like here that would have been a lot right <laughs> do you set yourselves a challenge to sort of work through different song genres within the show because there seem to be a huge variety of different styles of song in it or is it just that they fall out naturally with the way the story goes I think that it all kind of revolves around the central conceit which is sort of the handshake that we, sh- we set up at the beginning of the show which is essentially being like what the audience understands is that they've turned this evening into a big fancy musical yeah. in order to sort of like try and distract the audience from realizing that it's not an important story ultimately and so i feel like when you have the kind of the idea of a big fancy musical that you have to sort of like in theory aspire to that encompasses such a broad range of genres and styles and feels and i feel like if we'd just done like a very specifically like pop score it wouldn't have felt like true to that thing whereas like each number the musical styles kind of come out of uh, wanting to be sort of like, whether it's like a sort of big a tap dance number and therefore, you know, that be, and it's sort of like, we have a tap dance number that's sort of like the tap sounds sort of replace the sort of texting of like a iPhone keyboard or whatever. And then it's like, okay, well we need a sort of Hollywood um, uh, diva kind of song in order mm. to sort of like satirize the sort of idea of being kept a secret or whatever. So it's sort of like the, the, it wasn't so much that we were like, okay, we have to tick off all these genres, but we were like, well, each different sort of moment needs to sort of stretch into a different corner of musical theatre. Mm.